Hi there. I just um, flew into somewhere in the Denver area on a flight, and I was thinking on the flight, I hadn't done a video about the best airline. So I thought I would do a, you know, the best airline video. That's a pretty common video out there on YouTube. I thought I'd do my own spin on it. So let's get to it. This is going to be one of those death by PowerPoint videos because I'd like to have something to talk to. So let me bring up the PowerPoint. So this is not the best airline, but rather the best airline for you. So what makes the best airline for you? There's tons of airlines out there. Uh, three major ones in the US, Delta American United. But as you fly around the world, there's obviously others out there. And knowing which ones go where you wanna go and who partners with whom is important to finding the right airline for you. So what matters? So if you look at the YouTube videos out there that talk about which is the best airline and competing airlines, they're a lot of fun. I, I admit a guilty pleasure on watching them, but um, they all sort of focus on the, the service that you get or you know the on-time information, the food in the airline or the lounge. And most of this stuff I think is sort of hit and miss. Certainly the service is, um, you know, especially if you're talking about the main three US airlines, the service baseline is poor um, in, unless you have a really good crew. And really, if you have a good crew, which I've seen on all major airlines, I've had great airline in air crews, that's really, you're gonna get good service. If you have a bad crew, you're not gonna get good service. So what I look at, what I care about when I'm choosing the airline to partner with, and I'll tell you the one I partnered with uh, for my purposes, if you haven't already guessed that for most of my videos, um, is, does the airline go where I want to go? I look at my travel patterns out a year or two ahead and um, find an airline to partner with that is going to best suit my needs. So I'm looking at where are their hubs? You know, most of the airlines, certainly the three major ones, use a hub and spoke model. You know, the uh, lower cost ones like Southwest sometimes don't have hub and spoke, but most of them do. There's a hub and spoke model for these, which means that they have a few major centers. So if you're flying somewhere, not one of those centers, you're probably gonna have to lay over in one of those places. So like, for example, United has hubs in Denver, Chicago, San Francisco, Houston. I might've missed some, but I know those. Uh, Delta has hubs in Atlanta is their big hub. They have smaller hubs in JFK. Um, Seattle, Detroit, places like that. So where are these hubs and do they service you well? Who are the partner airlines? Not airline, not every airline flies every place. So you have to plug up these holes with some somehow. You can do it with their partner airlines, which means you'll still accrue miles and you can book through the main airline for the partners and crew miles if that's important to you. I would assert it should be. I also look at the app. How easy is it to use their app, their website to book flights? I'll show you some of the quirkiness later as we look at this. How easy it is to upgrade? I mean, flying in coach is not a great experience. Flying in first class is a better experience. I like that better. So I try to fly that as much as possible. And I like the lounges too. What are the lounges like? Are they gonna be fun? Are they gonna service my needs? Do I get free food? Can I go there when I land? Things like that. So I'm gonna do a comparison of, of the three major airlines in a frequent path that I take. So I have family, I've been living in Portland. I'm living now down in, the, in Ecuador. The major hub in Ecuador is Quito. So I fly into that a lot. I still go back and forth to Portland because I have family there. In fact, I still have an apartment there I haven't gotten rid of yet that I need to um, in a couple of weeks. So, I'm really interested in going back and forth between these two cities. So who services those two cities? Well, all three major airlines do, Delta United and American. If I want to fly from Portland to Quito, I can get up at 6 a.m., a, a little, little later on uh, United at 7 a.m., hop on any of the major airlines and get down there. Now, Delta is very convenient, 6 a.m., a couple hour, lay hour layover in Atlanta. On to Quito, I'm there by 8 p.m. United, pretty close. Hop on there at seven, get there by 1130. Yeah, a little longer layover, and that layover is in Houston. And um, American, American's a little tougher. It's two stops. It still doesn't take that long. I can be there 
by 10 p.m. that night. But when you're talking two stops and multiple layovers, now you run the risk of those jets getting delayed, especially on American, which tends to delay often. As you can see, the prices are similar in Delta and United, uh, for Coach at least, uh, about $950. Going up to first class, Delta's competitive at $1,500. United's a kind of overpriced $2,800 for that. Both legs are on uh, both of those airlines are just 737s. And then you've got American with their whacked out pricing. Um, whereas you look on there, this is straight off the page. All these are booked on the same date, November 5th, a nothing day, two months in advance, or several months in advance from here when I'm recording this. And you can get a coach seat for $2,000 on the 545 flight, or you can get a business class for $1,500. I'm not making that up. That's not a typo. I've seen it before. American is quoting for whatever reason, only has a flexible fare that they're quoting online for coach and a non-flexible for business. So buy the business. As you can see the overnight, they're they're quoting a rather competitive fare down there at $658 and $1,500 uh, for first class or business class is what they call it on American. So these are comparable. You can get there. Now let's make a little twist. Um, Keto is very nice to go to, but I also like to go to the beach town of Manta. So Manta does not have any direct flights from the U.S. You've got to go through something. That something is typically uh, keto again. So if you look at Delta, Delta will fly there. They add 50 bucks onto the flight, bring it up to 1000 bucks. You lay over and, you know, you f f do the normal route, Atlanta to, to keto. You lay over in keto, catch a flight the next morning on a partner airline, which is LATAM. They partner with in Ecuador. United is similar except for the pricing, where you still lay over in Houston, you pop into Keto, you lay over until 8.30 p.m. the next day, I don't know why, that, that late, and you can go on their partner airline, which is Avianca. Avianca and United are both Star Alliance. Delta and Latam have a partnership. So this is where that partnership and knowing who has partners comes in handy. These two do. Uh, why United charges an extra thousand for the flight, I have no idea, because the Av Avianca flight from Keto to Montes, 50, 60 bucks. I've taken it. Avianca is a nice little carrier and the flights are inexpensive. Latam's nice and their flights are expensive. And Avianca and Latam compete on that market. Uh, Americans, that's not a typo. I searched this three times and America has no partners in that area. There's no way to fly and their website doesn't tell you they don't have a flight. They just say they're having trouble, having some trouble. That's American's website. It's not that good. So American booking that direct through American is not going to be a, anything you can do. However, you can perfectly easily book the you, American trip to Quito if you wanted to, although it's two stops. I don't know why you would. And then pick up a Latam or Avianca from Quito and book it separately. In fact, both Delta and United, you could book them separately as well. You could book to Quito and then book their partner and a separate ticket and it's not that much difference because really the way these things get booked out they are two separate tickets you've got to grab your luggage you got to take it and check it in the next day so it's not checked all the way through you're still dealing with like it's two separate flights other than the fact that you just pay one one carrier and of course if you get, have your uh number set up right you can get miles uh for delta if you fly latam and i assume it's the same for united um Although I think it all just goes into the um, uh, Alliance uh, flight numbers or flight miles that you can do there to the Star Alliance. But this is an example of how knowing the partners, knowing where you, what airlines have partners and services area that you want to go to work. As you well know, if you listen to this channel, I focus on the Americas, North and South, fly back and forth. So really any of these airlines would suit my purposes, although you can see it might be slightly easier to book through Delta and United, and obviously cheaper through Delta and they don't kill puppies like United does. Okay, that was just once, so bad example. If you want really good service, you know, it, it's there's a strong correlation in many things in, in the United States that if you pay more money, you get better service. This is not earth shattering, I hope, to anyone. So. Getting status gets you better service, period. Uh, my wife doesn't have status on Delta. She calls up, she gets a different number at a much longer wait. I call up 
customer support on on Delta. They know my number. They route me to the uh, medallion queue. I get much shorter wait times, and I get pretty nice service. Uh, so you get miles, you spend more money on tickets, and you get status. Or you get a partner card. So we'll talk more about cards in a minute, but you can get cards branded for the airline, which will help you get status on those airlines and more miles on the airlines. But uh, really, if you want to get the best service, pick an airline, focus on it, get status. If you fly enough that you can focus on two or more, great. I don't think a lot of us can. So I pick the airline that matches where I'm going to be flying. For example, um, some time ago when I lived in Chicago, I focused on United. It was a major hub, it flew everywhere I needed to go. Now I'm living on the West Coast. Delta's got a hub in Seattle and I can fly down through LA to get to Mexico and I can get to South America on Delta really nice. So I'd focus on Delta. Sorry, United. So you can see there's several variations on uh, the airlines you can get. And I did want to touch a little bit more on the credit cards. So usually each airline has a paired credit card. Uh, you've got uh, American with City, Delta with American Express, and um, I forget who United pairs with. If you get those cards, you can earn a quicker path to status. So for example, you have to spend so many thousands of dollars on Delta to get enough medallion qualifying dollar, uh, dollar amounts racked up to get the higher level statuses like platinum or, or diamond. You, ha you can, however, at least for platinum, spend $25,000 on a credit card, on the co-branded credit card. This doesn't have to be on flights. This can be on anything, just your day-to-day -day life. So if you're spending money on rent, power, groceries, et cetera, it's not too hard to rack up 25 grand on your day-to-day -day life over a year, which will get you um, waive the qualifying dollar needed on ticket buys for the lower level statuses, uh, silver, uh, gold, and platinum. The diamond is much higher, and uh, United has something similar for their co-branded credit cards. Sorry, I'm not sure about uh, American. So using these credit cards to help get status, status gets you upgrades and gets you better service overall. So once you choose the airline that matches where you need to go, um, in my case, Delta, then seek out the co-branded credit card and use it to help rack up more miles and get higher status. Higher status means better service, which means a better flying experience. That's basically all I wanted to share with you today. I hope this makes sense and I hope you find it useful. If it does, hit the subscribe button. Thanks a lot for listening.